All right, so this is part two of our review for test three. It says on number eight, divide using synthetic division. So first of all, since we're dividing by x plus three, we'll put a negative three in the box. Remember, this is the form x minus c. And so it's really x minus negative three. So our c value is negative 3. I just think of it as I need to take the opposite sign of the plus 3 there. So that's what goes in the box. And then uh, notice next that we don't have an x term. Remember with long division or synthetic division, if you're ever missing a term, you're going to need to put in a 0. Um, it's basically a placeholder. And so our coefficients are going to be 1, well, let's see, let me put a 0x there. Our coefficients will be 1, 2, 0, and negative 4. So we'll set up our synthetic division like that. So let's bring down the 1. And then remember, we're always going to multiply, whenever we use this negative 3, we're always going to multiply times one of these numbers here. And then when we have columns, we'll add. I call it the multiply add shear. So we're going to multiply 1 times negative 3, we get negative 3. So here we're in a column, so we're going to add 2 and negative 3, we get negative 1. Next, we multiply the negative 1 times negative 3, and that's 3, and that goes there, and then we'll add, and we get 3. Multiply negative 3 times 3, you get negative 9. In the column, we add negative 4, negative 9 is negative 13. Now remember, our dividend has a degree of 3, so this 1 is going to represent a 1x squared, or it'll be the coefficient of x squared. And then the minus 1, we're just going to drop our degree by 1, it'll be minus x, and then plus 3. This last number should always be your constant. Whoops. All right, so our answer is going to be x squared minus x plus 3, that's what we call the quotient, plus our remainder, which was negative 13, over what we're dividing by. Now I think in my math lab it'll just ask you what's the quotient and what's the remainder. So again, the quotient is this part here, and the remainder is just negative 13. All right, on number 9, if uh, f of x equals x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 12x squared plus 32x minus 10, use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find f of negative 7. Now, thinking back to the remainder theorem, negative 7 is actually our c value. Whoops. And uh, so basically, Oops, I forgot. Up above on number 8, you could also write your answer that way. All right, so on number 9, this is x minus c. In this case, that would be x plus 7. Basically, what the remainder theorem says is if we divide this polynomial by x minus 7, I'm sorry, x minus c, in this case, that would be x plus 7, whatever we get for a remainder will equal f of c. And so let's go ahead and set up the synthetic division using the c value, which is negative 7. So we'll bring down our 1. If you have already done this, you might want to go ahead and do the synthetic division just to make sure you know how to do it. So when we multiply 1 and negative 7, we get negative 7. And then we add, we get negative 2. Multiply negative 7 times negative 2, you get 14. When you add, you get 2. Multiply negative 7 times 2, you get negative 14. When you add, you get 18. Negative 7 times 18 is negative 126. When you add, you get negative 136. So f of negative 7 is going to equal negative 136. All right, let's move on to number 10. So determine whether 3 and negative 2 are zeros. Well, the factor theorem tells us that if, um, if 
we get zero as a remainder when we do division. Well, actually, I should say it this way. First of all, if x equals three is, is a zero, that would mean x minus three is a factor. And if x minus two is a zero, that would mean that x plus two is a factor. So basically, if we do synthetic division and we get a remainder of zero, then, uh, then what we have is a zero. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the first one. So we wanna see if three is a zero, which would mean that x minus three is a factor. So let's go ahead and set up the synthetic division. Notice we need to put zeros for the x cubed term and the x term. So when we set it up, it'll look like that. So let's bring down the one. Three times one is three. Zero plus three is three. When we multiply three and three, we get nine. Adding two and nine, we get 11. Three times 11 is 33. When we add, we get 33. Multiply three times 33, you get 99. 99 and a negative 24 give you 75. So we didn't get a remainder of zero, which means x minus three is not a factor, and three is not a zero. Let's go on and try negative two. So the first one answers no. Um, so let me set this up. So negative two goes in the box, that's our zero. We're basically dividing by x plus two this time. And so let's go ahead and set this up. So let's bring down our one. When you multiply, you get negative two. When you add, you get negative two. Multiply the negative twos, you get four. When you add, you get six. Negative two times six is negative 12. When you add, you get negative 12. Negative two times negative 12 is 24. And when you add, you get zero. All right, so we did get a remainder of zero. That tells us that negative two is a zero, it tells us that x plus two is a factor. And so we were just checking to see if negative two is a zero, and the answer is yes. Number 11, it says factor the polynomial function f of x equals x cubed plus two x squared minus 13 x plus 10, then solve f of x equals zero. Notice it says use your calculator to find the first zero, then use synthetic division to help break down the polynomial. See, if you tried to factor this by grouping, it wouldn't work. So none of our factoring skills from before would help us to find the zeros here, which is ultimately what we're gonna be doing. So let's go ahead and get our first zero off the calculator. You should see that one is a zero. In fact, you'll see all three of them but remember, you can only take the first, and then you'll use that to find the others using algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and do synthetic division with one. We're expecting to get a remainder of zero. So drop your one. When you multiply the ones, you get two. Add in the column, you get three. Three times one is three. When you add, you get negative 10. Negative 10 times one is negative 10 and when you add, you get zero. So we did expect zero, and that's what we got. But the bigger thing is now we can write f of x in factored form. It's gonna be x minus one, because we know one is a zero, that means x minus one is a factor. And then the other factor comes from here. So again, this was x cubed, so we're gonna drop our degree by one. So we have a one x squared plus three x minus 10. Now, this part here is a trinomial, and we could factor that, or there's a good chance we can. If not, we would have to solve using one of our other methods for solving quadratic equations. All right, so I need two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add up to three. Well, it's gonna be a negative two and five, and so this becomes x minus one times x minus two times x plus five. And so our zeros, well, first of all, we have factored f of x. That was our first step. And now to find um, when f of x equals zero, basically when we solve that, we're finding the zeros. And so that would be, 
Whoops, hold on a second. I need to go back. Basically what we're doing is setting this equal to zero to find our zeros. We get one, two, and negative five. And that's gonna give us our solutions to that equation. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. It says find a polynomial function of degree four with negative two as a zero of multiplicity three and zero as a zero of multiplicity one. Be sure to multiply the factors together to get a polynomial function in descending order. All right, so uh, first of all, if negative two is a zero of multiplicity three, f of x is gonna equal x plus two to the third power. If zero has a multiplicity of one, we'll just have one factor of x. And so we need to multiply this out. I'm gonna go ahead and do my work off to the right over here. Uh, but first I'm gonna put that x in front. Let's go ahead and multiply x plus two quantity, uh, the quantity x plus two cubed over here. So we're gonna multiply three x plus two factors. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply two of them over here. Let's see, x times x is x squared. X, uh, my outer product is two times x. My inner product is two x. And my last product is four. Notice my like terms here. This is gonna simplify to x squared plus four x plus four. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this as x plus two. I'm basically gonna replace this part with what we just got, which is x squared plus four x plus four. I did it in that order because I like to have my binomial in front. And so now let's go ahead and distribute the x. x times x squared is x cubed, x times four x is four x squared, and x times four is four x. Next we'll distribute the two. Two times x squared is two x squared. Notice I'm just gonna write the like terms below the others. Uh, two times four x is eight x, and two times four is eight. When we combine our like terms, we end up with x cubed plus six x squared plus 12 x plus eight. And so now I can go back over to the left and I can replace x plus two quantity cubed with what we just got here. And now we just need to distribute the x and all that's gonna do is increase each of our exponents by one. We're gonna get f of x is equal x to the fourth plus six x cubed plus 12 x squared plus eight x. All right, on number 13, it says to find a polynomial function of lowest degree that has as sum of its zeros, negative square root of seven and four i. And then again, we need to multiply these out and write our answer in descending order. Well, we know that um, irrational zeros come in pairs. In fact, they're conjugates. And the same thing's true with imaginary zeros. If negative square root of seven is a zero, then we know positive square root of seven would be. And if four i is a zero, we, need, we would also know negative four i would be a zero. Again, these always come in pairs. And uh, so now we can write our polynomial, or f of x. Let's see, if square root of seven is a zero, then x minus square root of seven is a factor. If negative square root of seven is a zero, then x plus the square root of seven is a factor. If four i is a zero, then x minus four i is a factor. And if negative four i is a zero, then x plus four i is a factor. Now when we multiply these out, we're gonna wanna multiply these two here first, the radical expressions. And once we've done that, we'll do the same thing with these complex expressions. So let's go ahead and uh, remember these are conjugates. I mean, you can see that what we have here are conjugates. They're the exact same binomials, except one has a minus in the middle, one has a plus. And so all we have to do is multiply the first terms and the last terms. The inner and outer products actually are opposites and add to zero. So x times x is gonna give you x squared negative square root of seven times the square root of seven, 
And remember, the square root of a number times itself just gives you the number inside. You may recall, we did this a while back, we're basically squaring a square root, and those are opposites, and so you just get 7 when you do that. And so, let's see, we're going to get a minus 7, and so that's that part, and then factoring here, or multiplying out here, we're going to get x times x is x squared, <coughs> and then negative 4i times 4i is a minus 16i squared. And now I'm, I, I'm looking at that i squared. Don't forget i squared equals negative 1. So negative 1 times a minus 16, we're going to end up with x squared plus 16. Now I'm going to go ahead and foil this all out off to the right here. So we'll multiply our x squareds. We get x to the fourth. Our outer product is going to be 16x squared. Our inner product is negative 7x squared. And our last product is negative 112. And so this is our final answer, uh, except for I need to combine my x squareds. So we'll get 9x squared there. So now our final answer is x to the fourth plus 9x squared minus 112. All right, let's look at number 14. So it says, list all pa uh, possible rational zeros of the following polynomial functions. Notice you do not have to find the zeros. What we're getting here is just possible rational zeros, numbers that can be written as a fraction. Now keep in mind that these polynomials could have complex zeros, they could have irrational zeros, all this gives us is the possible rational zeros. We're really using what's called the rational, excuse me, zeros theorem. So basically that's the P's and Q thing that we did. So if we, any zeros are, that are rational will have the form P over Q. And in this problem, um, the P's are going to be the factors of 8. And the q's are going to be the factors, well basically p is 8 and q is 1 here, but really p is actually the factors of 8 and q is the factors of our leading coefficient, which would be 1. So the factors of 8, including the positive and negatives, would be plus or minus 1, 2, 4, and 8. Our uh, factors of 1 are just plus or minus 1. So we're going to take each of our numbers in the numerator and put them over 1. Well, that makes this pretty easy. Our numerator is going to give us all our answers. And I like to write it this way, plus or minus, and then put a brace, 1, 2, 4, and 8. So notice that represents 8 numbers, 1, 2, 4, and 8, and their negatives. All right, so let's do the same thing with B. So any rational zeros will have the form p over q and so our p's are coming from the factors of 14 our q's will come from the factors of 4 so the factors of 14 that would be 1 2 7 and 14 again plus or minus for each the factors of 4 well 1 2 and 4 would be your factors of 4 again with the plus or minuses now remember, um, we're going to take each number in the numerator over 1, and then we'll put each of them over 2, and so on. So when you put them over 1, you're just going to get the numbers themselves. So 1, 2, 7, and 14. Now if I put each of these over 2, let's see, what are we going to have here? Well, we'll have 1 over 2, which is a half. 2 over 2, well that's 1, we already have 1. 7 over 2, that's going to give us 7 halves, we don't have that. And 14 over 2, well that's 7, we already have 7. Alright, so then we're going to take each of our numbers and put them over 4. So 1 over 4 is 1 fourth. 2 over 4, well that's a half, we already have a half. 7 over 4, we don't have that. And 14 over 4, well that's 7 halves, we already have that. So this is going to be all of our possible rational zeros. Now in the old days, we would uh, 
take each of these possible numbers and in fact there's one two three four five six seven eight of these times two 16 possible zeros and we would do synthetic division repeatedly until we got a remainder of zero um, remember we're allowing or I'm allowing you to use your calculator to get the first zero alright so let's go ahead and move on to the next page and actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop here I guess I need to make one more video